Hi guys, this is Angela from the London App Brewery again. Welcome to the eighth episode in our series of how to make apps with no programming experience. In this episode, we're going to be connecting up our beautiful designs with code. And I'm going to show you how Xcode writes code for you without very much effort on your part. And so we're going to be making what's called IB outlets and IB actions. And that's the means through which we're going to link up our code with our design. So let's get back to our app and I'll explain as I show you how it's done. So open up Xcode or if you've already got it open, navigate to this circle within a circle icon and tap on it to show the assistant editor. This basically splits up the screen into two parts. On one side, you've got the interface builder still showing. And on the other side, you've now got view controller, which is located over here, but showing on the right. This way you have access to both the design file and the code file at the same time and allows for easy creation of IB actions and IB outlets. So let's make one now. So firstly, I'm going to make two IB outlets for each of the dice image views. So I'm going to hold down the control button on my keyboard and then click on the image view. And then I'm going to drag it over here to my view controller class. Now you should be able to see this blue line pop up and I want you to just slot it exactly where I am. So just above view did load right here. And you've got a little pop up that comes up. And we're going to keep it as an outlet and we're going to call it dice. Oops, got the caps lock on dice image view one. And then we're going to press enter or press connect to link it all up. And if you have a look over here, you can see this little uh, circle within a circle symbol. Now, when the links are active, that circle is filled in. But when the link is broken, then that is just an empty circle. And also when you mouse over this little icon, it actually highlights um, the design part that you have linked up. You can also check in the design file by right clicking on the image view and you can see the outlet that's linked up is to the view controller and it's called dice image view one and it's filled in. So we can go ahead and break this by just clicking the cross on that reference outlet and now you can see that this is now empty showing that there's nothing linked to it and we can link it back up by just again pressing control holding down control, click on the image view and then drag it over just to the name dice image view one. Now, if you put it anywhere else and you see the blue uh, line, then you're actually creating a new IB outlet, but we want it to use this one. We just want it link it up. So if I put it onto this part and you've got the blue uh, highlighting that you can see there, then we can successfully make a IB outlet. But the problem is that if I do it like this and I just do it with a blue line, then it actually makes a new IB outlet, which is not what we want at this stage. So the other option is I'm going to go ahead and break that link again. The other option is I could, you can actually go backwards. You can go from the code to the design file. Let me just indent it to make it more clear. So where you've got this circle next to the IB outlet, you can click it and drag it over to this design and that also links it up. Now, if I go ahead and delete this bit of code, say, you know, I decide that I don't actually need this anymore and I just go ahead and close it, uh, I go ahead and delete it, then you might think that link is broken, but it's actually not. Because when you right click on here, you can see that link is still active. And the reason for that is because when you make that link, Xcode automatically writes a bit of code for you within the main storyboard file. Now that's not visible because we're only looking at the designs, but if you go ahead to main storyboard, right click and then open as source code, and it will show it to you like this. So this is exactly the same as the design file that we saw just now, but in a, a language called XML. And there should be a section in here for connections. So here you go, you've got connections. If you've ever uh, programmed in HTML, this will be very, very familiar to you. So you've got connections, open connections, end. And in there we have an outlet, which is called dice image view one. 
and it's got a destination, which is our view controller. So this is not removed when you remove the code from your view controller. So if we just pull up the view controller on the right, even though we've deleted it over here, we have not gotten rid of it in this file. So you can either go ahead and delete it there, or what's probably easier is when you view it as an interface builder, right click and click on the cross. So I'm going to show you what happens if you don't break that link while deleting the code in the view controller. So let's just go ahead and run this on say an iPhone 5. So let's press run. So there we go, our app ran and it immediately crashed. So we can go and have a look in the debug console to see why exactly it crashed. Now there's a lot of text, but scroll right up to the top and you can see here it says terminating app due to uncaught exception. This class is not key value coding compliant for the key dice image view one. Now you're going to get a lot more used to looking at error logs and the, the way that they say it is probably not the most intuitive. But after you start debugging for a couple of times, you'll start noticing uh, patterns in the things that they say. For example, if you remember this sentence, this class is not key value coding compliant for the key. This sentence tends to mean that you have a link that is present in the interface builder, the design file, that you have not removed while you've removed the code that it's linked to. So exactly what I've done before. This is what it's telling you. And it's actually indicating to you the one where that link is not broken. And that's the dice image view one. And this is coming from that XML file that I showed you earlier. So let's go ahead and get rid of uh, the uh, debug console. So the shortcut is command shift Y. And let's go into our design file and now break that link and if we run it again you'll see that there are no problems at all and we've debugged for the first time yay okay so let's get on with some real business so i'm going to hold down control click on this left dice and then i'm going to drag it over here making a new blue line and we are going to make a new outlet we're going to call it dice image view one and then we're going to link up the second one and put it just underneath, call it dice image view two. Great. So this is a reference to an outlet. What does that mean? This means that I can use this reference, uh, dice image view one, in order to change the properties of these images. So I can go ahead and view did load and say, when the view loads, I want dice image view one dot image to equal UI image and bracket, open bracket, I'm going to put named and in here I'm going to call it dice, let's put in dice six into there, right? So as you've noticed, when I type, because some of the method names and some of these things from Swift are very, very long, the best way is just to either enter, uh, press tab or press enter for it to enter it automatically. So for example, let's do this for dice image view two and I'll talk you through it. So I already entered DI and you can see that it's showing me all the options I can use. And I'm just gonna press down to go to dice image view two, press enter. I'm gonna access its image property by using the dot notation dot image. And I'm gonna set that to UI image so there we go, UI image, click enter, open brackets, and it's already suggesting the one that I used previously, named, enter again. And now it's highlighting this part, and I can just go ahead and type, let's change dice image view two to dice one. So this way, if everything works perfectly, then we should have dice six on the left and dice one on the right. Let's go ahead and run that. And voila, we were absolutely right. And that's how IB outlets work.
you use it to set the properties of the elements that you link. So now we're going to link up the roll button. And instead of what we did before, where we created an IB outlet, here I'm going to create what's called an IB action. So hold down the control key and click the roll button and drag it over to just above the last closing brace right here. So, and then make sure that you've got this little blue line come up and let go. And instead of creating an outlet as we did before, which we use to change the property of the button or image view, we're gonna click on this drop down list and we're gonna make an action this time. And we're gonna call it roll button pressed. Now we're gonna change the type to UI button because that's exactly what it is. And the event, if you click on the drop down list, you can see that many events uh, can trigger this particular action, but we want the touch up inside. What does that mean? That means you touch the screen at the point where the roll button exists and you lift up your finger while you're still within the bounds of the roll button. So that's exactly what I want. And that's the commonly used um, event. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect it up. Now you can see that this looks slightly different from the IB outlet because it's got two curly braces. And that is because it is a method as denoted by the func keyword. So let's go ahead and expand open up that uh, bracket. And in here, we are able to core parts of code that only happen when we click on the roll button. So let's go ahead and just write a print statement. And we're going to say roll button was pressed. Now, of course, the user can't see this because this will be printed to your console. But let's just go and run that app and see what happens. So let's press the roll button and there we go. The console log uh, shows roll button was pressed, printing out exactly what we wrote there. All right, and that is how you make an IB action and how you make an IB outlet. So keep track of the links that you've made and make sure that if you delete them in the code that you also delete them in the design file. We're gonna be doing more videos on error logging and debugging, so keep your eyes out for those. So meanwhile, in the next episode, we're going to be making some variables to keep track of the state of our Dice app. And I'm going to talk a bit more about data types, variables and constants. So keep your eyes peeled for the next video upload and I will see you next time. And please, please, please remember to subscribe. Um, it makes me so happy to see the, our subscription. It makes me so happy, if not for anything else. <laughs> so that's all from me and see you next time.